Hello students. In this video, we will learn about the business environment and the strategy analysis of a company. For the purpose of illustration, I have chosen Lululemon Athletica, which is in the business of designing, uh, marketing and distributing the athletic apparel. The Financial analysis is incomplete without knowing the company, without knowing the industry of the company and its strategy, what strategy it is pursuing in order to compete in the industry. So we will look into that what business uh, the company operates in. Uh, in our case, it's Lululemon. Also, we will see some key financial uh, data to check on its recent performance and the management views about the company. We will also see that what are the, its main competitor and what is the most common strategy they are adopting to remain competitive. So let's move ahead and check the learning objectives uh, slide of, the, of today's lecture. So we are looking uh, into the business environment and the strategy analysis of Lululemon for the fiscal year 2019. These are the learning objectives. We will first look at what business the company operates in and also what are the operating risk of the company. And this is very, these points are very important. We want to see that to uh, uh, what risk uh, the company is ex exposed to. We'll also look into the key financial uh, uh, numbers uh, in order to find out the financial performance of the company. We will uh, have a brief look over the main competitor and what are strategies they are per pursuing in order to remain competitive in the industry. Also, we will see the company's strategies, which is Lululemon's uh, in this case, to remain competitive in the industry industry and finally we will uh, check what are, are the management's uh, views about the company's performance so first of all the industry the the lululemon is uh, in the apparel retail industry so they are involved in the uh, designing, distributing and marketing the athletic apparels and uh, we are saying it in the retail because uh, they are in direct touch with the customer through their company operated store or, and the, uh, or the um, uh, internet through which they are generating their business. The vision and goal of the company is important to know. And in this case, uh, the vision of the company is actually, uh, in a simple word, the, like uh, uh, these, th this vision is taken from its 10K that we have a vision to be a, the experiential brand that ignites a community of people through sweat, grow and connect, which we call living the sweat life so this is the line taken as it as it is from its 10k what i have understood is in a simple way they want to uh, 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 to encourage the environment of uh, healthy lifestyle in the community uh, but in a stylish way and uh, uh, that stylish way comes through their brand uh, name and brand reputation and that is the reason they are mostly spending a lot of time in, in designing and do a lot of innovation when it comes to their product development. The product uh, uh, details is given on the page one of the 10K for the fiscal year 2019. And when I'm saying that for the fiscal year 2019, it means that these reports or 10K reports might have been issued an, in 2020, but it actually covers most of the period from 2019. For example, in this case, uh, uh, the 11 months of 2019 is covered and one month of 2020 and the 10K report of the Lululemon came out in the March of 2020. So the product uh, details are given on page one of 10K and they are producing 
uh, in fact, they are designing, distributing, and marketing pants, jackets, shorts, and tops for the athletic activities and the fitness related accessories like the mats, bags, uh, etc. Now, once we know about the business, there are few more questions we have to look into and that what markets they are uh, actually they're, they're selling their, what are the markets in which they are selling their products and what are their main target audience. It seems that its main customers are actually women, but it does not mean that they are not producing the product or uh, they are not designing the product and selling and distributing it the, the men product. They are, there are actually a lot of growth for the men product. In fact, 34% increase actually happened in the in the fiscal year of 2019. Their main market is the North America market the, where they are uh, selling or generating the revenues more than uh, more than 80% of the revenues they are generating from the Canada and the US market. They are also expanding in Europe and the Asia Pacific and uh, uh, in the fiscal year 2019 uh, there was a 31% growth compared to the fiscal year 2018 in the Europe and the Asia Pacific market. And we can see that the growth in terms of growth, though the major revenue comes from the North America, but the growth is happening through expansion in Europe and the Asia Pacific market, which is 31%. They, their main segments using which they are actually selling their product are the company operated stores. There are 491 stores in 17 uh, countries and uh, 51 more stores are added in 2019 compared to the uh, uh, fiscal year 2018. And the most of the expansion happened actually in China and USA. Uh, in USA, uh, the stores compared to 2018 in 2019 increased from 305 uh, to 305 from 285 and in China it increased uh, by 16 stores uh, uh, where the new numbers are 38 stores compared to 22 stores in the fiscal year 2018. The second segment through which they are producing or, or selling um, um, not producing, selling uh, their apparels and their product is the direct to consumer where they are launching uh, the the websites. Uh, obviously, they already have a website in the North America, but recently they have also uh, uh, um, uh, 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 made available the the country specific sites in the France, Germany and the Japan. So from the uh, internet presence from the uh, digital presence they are also increasing their revenues and whatever is not coming under the company operated or they, they are selling not uh, they are selling something which is not covered under the company operated stores uh, or the direct to consumer uh, sales those sales comes under under the other segments and all these details are given on page two and three of the 10k and, and these other segments usually include the warehouse sales or the whole sales sales now, now we need to know about few important numbers of uh, the of the company first of all which fiscal years you are using uh, and the fiscal year of the company can be different than the annual year. An annual year starts from the 1st of January and ends on the uh, on the 31st of December. But your company's fiscal year can be different. For example, the, in case of Lululemon, the fiscal year starts from 1st of Feb and, and uh, it ends on the 31st of January because usually in, in, in the month of January and December, they have a lot more sales. In fact, it is very surprising to know that in that th there is so much sale in the fourth quarter that their major operating uh, income, 46% of their uh, operating income out of the whole fiscal year of 2019 actually generated in the last quarter, which is the November, December and January. So uh, the fiscal year can be different 
depending what business uh, your company is operating in also see the currency uh, it seems like uh, uh, like uh, some people might think that it's a common sense that it's in us dollars but it is necessarily not be the case when you are analyzing a company always see that what us dollars uh, uh, like what currency uh, they are mentioning their reports in because uh, uh, while analyzing a company uh, we also need to see that what are the key uh, 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 what, what 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 are the key data and uh, in order to understand its financial performance so always see the revenues of the of the company uh, in this case it's almost uh, 3.9 nine seven nine billion you can say four billion revenues the company has generated which in the fiscal year 2019 uh, compared to 2018 that revenue grew by 21 percent so they are uh, the company is showing some tremendous growth now out of this uh, revenue 63 percent of the revenue is generated by the company operated stores so we can see that the tradi traditional way of selling the the uh, the the product is uh, uh, is working for the company and because now they have recently shown their uh, digital presence uh, on the internet and so the that segment is also generating a big chunk of the revenues which is 29 percent and the rest 88 percent comes from the others this information you can double check on the company's uh, 10k from the fiscal year 2019 uh, and uh, the information is on page number 23 uh, of the 10k from the uh, from the uh, fiscal year 2019 statement remember again that fiscal year 2019 statement actually published in 2020 so you need to see the the 10k from the march of 2020 so even though the fiscal year ended on 31st january but it usually takes some time for the company to publish the reports on the 10k the operating income is about 0.8 billion which is in fact 0.9 billion uh, for the company and there is a growth of 26 percent in operating income compared to the fiscal year 2019 the operating income is very important because we want to see that what is the income generated by the operations of the of the company and we can also see that uh, within the operating income the, the distribution is seems to be uh, uh, very weird 28 percent of the operating income is generated by the company operated store versus 42 percent so it means that the uh, the cost uh, of retail stores are very high you have to one has to pay the rent for the retail stores so this is uh, the, the, the this is very important insight and this also uh, can give the idea uh, to the, the to the user of the financial statement that where the company should do more investment in fact they need to go do more aggressive marketing uh, and uh, when it comes to the uh, to the digital uh, uh, sales and they want uh, they, they need to increase their revenue uh, through the digital sales or the internet sales compared to the to the store sales sales it does not mean because that store sales uh, should not be focused on because many people uh, still like it to go to the malls and uh, buy the product uh, from the stores uh, where they can um, uh, test uh, uh, the, 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 the product by going into the fitting rooms and uh, especially in the case of uh, this luxury item I think the stores should be given the due importance but this also shows that where there are, there is more cost so the cost is clearly is incurred more when in uh, when these sales are happening uh, through the stores because you might have to pay the rent you have to pay to the employees uh, who are working in this in in the store now the net income is around uh, 0.6 billion or uh, you can six, see that 645 million uh, 596,000 so uh, the year is a growth of the net income is as well in the fiscal year 2019 compared to the fiscal year 2018 and this shows that there, there is a tremendous growth potential the company is showing so uh, uh, the numbers are clearly suggesting that company is doing 
better when uh, when it comes to the financial performance now the basic uh, 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 weighted um, average number of sh shares outstanding we need to know about this because these we use in order to find out the basic earnings per share and, and these shares are 130 million 393000 and the data is given on page number 19 some people might be or student might be thinking that what is uh, the this basic uh, weighted average so for example uh, i'm i'm giving a very simple exam, uh, example if say the fiscal year start from the 1st jan and it ends on the 12th december right on the 1st january the the shares total shares are 100000 these are the outstanding uh, uh, shares now right in the middle i'm just keeping the calculation easy that's why i'm creating this scenario so right in the middle on the 1st of july 1st of july 100 thousand shares are issued again so what are the outstanding shares by 12 december 200000 right in case over here let's suppose the company profit is uh, 400000 in order to find the earnings per share you have to find uh, you have to divide this 400000 with the outstanding number of shares so which outstanding number of shares will you use 100000 or 200000 if we'll use 100000 which was at the start of the fiscal year then the eps is four dollar right 400000 divided by 100000 which is the outstanding share if we'll use 200000 which is the sh outstanding share but on the 12th december then the earning per share is two dollars so there is a big difference so what is the right approach so right approach is that we will basically uh, compute the weighted average of this year so we will see that almost for the half of the years during which the earning for which the uh, for the period for which the earning is being reported which is four hundred thousand dollars for half of the that that period the outstanding shares were one hundred thousand right so we'll multiply 0 0.5 with the 100000 shares which were at, at the start of the 1st of january and then for the second half we will see that the outstanding share are 200000 so we will multiply 200000 with 0 0.5 and in doing that if we will we know that over here we will get 50000 and over there we'll get 100,000. So the outstanding shares, the weighted average number of shares outstanding will be 150,000 shares. And now we will divide this 400,000, which is the, the, the net income uh, with 150,000. And if I'll do this calculation, my answer for this is 2.67. So the earnings per share will be 2.67 so that is why we are using this number of name of the weighted average number of shares outstanding now the second thing is diluted weighted average number of shares outstanding so there are few securities uh, or there are uh, there are few uh, uh, items which can be converted into the shares so for example they they can be the stock options they can be the convertible debt they can be the preferred uh, uh, stock they can convert can be converted the, the, so the, the 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 company might have issued the preferred stock with the option that it can be converted into into the common stock so if those can, will be converted then obviously they will increase the common shares number of the common shares and dilute the earnings per share right so the same 400000 now might be divided so the, the same 400000 might be divided by the more number of shares in that case we want to know 
that what are the diluted weighted average number of shares outstanding if in case of earnings per share you see that if the basics earning per share where we are have divided the net income of the company in uh, for the lululemon by the total number of common shares the basic common shares we got 4.95 the diluted earnings per share in which we divided the same uh, net income with the diluted weighted average number of shares outstanding which is this one we got 4.93 if this number is not much different which is not the case with the with the lululemon then it's fine to keep using the the basics earning per share but if there's a big difference say if this turn out to be 2.95 then diluted earnings per share is the more relevant number for the for the uh, common stockholders because uh, their stakes are involved they should know that how the their earnings of their share will dilute if the uh, if the convertible uh, stocks or convertible bonds will be converted into the common stock uh, by the holders of those Uh, items the growth of the basic earning per share for the lululemon is 37% in 2000 in the fiscal year 2019 we can see that the total assets of the of the the company lululemon is 3.3 billion with the total liabilities of 1.3 billion the long term debt is surprisingly zero from this the the major liabilities are the lease liabilities and the tax liabilities moreover th- within the same liabilities we also have the short term liabilities for example they might have to pay to the suppliers so it means that the company is relatively l- uh, like less risky when it comes to the financial risk because they do not carrying the the the, the uh, they have not issued the bonds uh, which is very surprising when we see the cash and cash equivalent this is 1.1 billion so they have a lot of liquidity to settle their obligation their revolving credit is just 400 million just 400 million so they can right away pay out even if this whole normally in case of revolving credit revolving credit means where you are using the credit line of the bank and then you are paying it off and then utilizing more so uh, along like as soon as you are receiving the cash you are keep on paying and settling that credit and if you see that even if that four four full 400 million is utilized the company has enough cash to settle that 400 million their effective tax rate which is given on the page number 21 of the 10k from the fiscal year 2019 um uh, uh, st- uh, like statement is 28.1%. So these are few important numbers of the lululemon. This is the snapshot uh, from the item number 6 uh, of the selected financial data and you can see that uh, uh, the numbers which I discussed in the previous slide they are mentioned over here, right? So uh, this thing you can see they are mentioned over here not all the data but most of the data uh, operating income is not mentioned over here uh, but the in, the net income is mentioned over here likewise the revenue is also mentioned over here but if you go on the same page number 19 this will be uh, these revenues and operating income must be mentioned on the same page so you can double check the numbers as well if you see this recent stock performance lululemon has beaten the market it has beaten the the market index it has also beaten the 500 s&p 500 apparel uh, accessories and luxury good index uh, and uh, the, the lululemon belongs to this this same industry you can see that if someone has invested in the 1st february 2015 100 in that uh, index uh, he actually had a loss because by 2nd Fe- february in 5 years 2020 uh, like he end up getting less than 100 now look at the lululemon it's in blue line if the same 100 dollar would have invested in the lululemon on 1st february 2015 uh, uh, the person would have uh, uh, increased the worth of that 100 uh, 
dollar to 300 and more than 350 dollars so it, it, it is uh, like exceptional performance from the lululemon so it seems like that this is a very promising company for the investor so let's move ahead and look at the uh, other key data and uh, it's not the data let's uh, look uh, on the other uh, aspect of the company so let's move ahead with the operating risk if we see the if we want to know the operating risk we need, we need to know the revenue generation that geographically from where the major revenue are coming for example if there is a company whose 100 percent revenues are coming from uh, from canada or united states um, uh, it that company is less risky compared to a company who whose 70 percent revenues or even 30 40 percent revenues are coming say from uh, mexico or uh, um, or middle east uh, so uh, the, op the the second company is at uh, uh, more risky its operations are more risky compared to the first company so in case of lululemon 72 percent of the revenues are generated in the united states again given on page number 66 and in case of Canada, six, uh, sixteen percent revenues are coming from the Canada, and the rest twelve percent are coming from the uh, outside of the uh, uh, North America. This NA is not not applicable; it's actually North America. Then we have seventy percent of the revenues are coming from the from the women uh, versus twenty three, which is coming from the men. And uh, uh, the the research suggests that. Uh, uh, women are more loyal customer it seems like that uh, the operational risk is very less uh, 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 in case of the lululemon if you see this seasonality the then we can see that it's actually uh, off it is not odd it's off that the company is in a very uh, uh, high uh, seasonal biz business and there is uh, 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 and this posed some risk to the to the company, and uh, it's a part of the operational risk. And 47% uh, uh, of the company's operating profit is generated in the fourth quarter. So it means only 53% of the, uh, uh, the operating profit is generated in the first nine months of the fiscal year, uh, compared to the 47%. Uh, in the fourth quarter so almost half of the company's operating profit is generating in the last quarter this suggests that it's a very uh, and it's a highly seasonal business might be people uh, share gift and in the those gifts during the winter times uh, or uh, while giving the christmas presents they might give lululemon uh, products to to uh, to the relatives and the friends if you see the manufacturing the the manufacturer is totally outsourced they, so the company do not have any manufacturing unit they have few suppliers and they are depending on few manufacturers so 39 manufacturers uh, mostly in the uh, the asia pacific uh, uh, and uh, one is sri lanka which uh, is not though in the in the the uh, over uh, in the uh, asia, asia pacific but uh, the manufacturers mostly are in the Asia Pacific and there are 39 of them. Five of those 39 manufacturers produce 56% of the product. So they are very much dependent on these uh, manufacturers. They might need to uh, have a more diverse strategy when it comes to the, uh, to the production of their uh, product. On 16th March, because of the COVID in China, their all stores were closed. But I checked then 10Q as well because 10Q has come, and so those stores are opened again in the mid of the May. So it see uh, like it seems that they are back on track. And if you see uh, their first quarter numbers, they are actually a uh, first quarter number for the fiscal year of 2020, whose 10k is not yet obviously generated it will come after the february uh, of 2021 uh, i can see that uh, the company actually sustained the 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 impact of covid-19 very well and we want to see that what strategy they are they have actually adopted in order to uh, sustain the impact of covid-19 so when we we'll go to the strategy section of the company we will look into it 
if we'll see the competitors so these are the main competitors we have nike adidas under armor under armor is is in financial trouble these days they are into uh, a major restructuring uh, uh, structuring they are in the middle of major restructuring if you see the nike uh, uh, th that is company that company is doing good today i saw its uh, stock uh, price is 116 uh, so uh, i want to see that what is the main strategy all these competitors have adopted number one i have seen that the main common strategy which which the companies in the industry is adopting is building brand image so there is a lot of competition in the industry and all of them are working on the brand building and maintaining the brand image this uh, if I, you visit their 10k this is the most common strategy we will find so this is what i have identified likewise for these companies one should go and check all these same numbers which we uh, have checked for the lululemon for example uh, the revenues operating income net income uh, eps uh, uh, likewise uh, the 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 uh, the overall asset and debt so one should check for these companies like uh, i have done over here for the lululemon now what is the strategy for the lululemon uh, to remain competitive in the industry lululemon this is important we want to see that and if we see that main thing they are they have adopted the vertical retail strategy so what is the vertical retail strategy in case of the vertical straight retail strategy they have uh, uh, they have kept the strong control on everything right from the design then distribution and marketing of their product so they kept everything in their hand and kept a strong control in in that they have not uh, like uh, like outsource the distribution uh, and uh, or or the design it's not like this that they, uh, they 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 are just adopting other people's design they are very much innovative they do, they they are they are spending a lot of uh, 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 money in research and, and development so that they come up with the innovative designs so they kept the whole process right from the idea of the new product till the uh, distribution and marketing in their hand yes over here we can see that the manufacturing uh, is not in their hand but uh, they uh, even th they have a strong control uh, on the uh, on the producers of their product and uh, they, they do a thorough checking and detailed testing of the product and quality assurance before th those uh product hit the shelves then they have a growth plan and they the management uh of uh, the lululemon have named this growth plan as the power of three growth plan and, uh, they are very much into the innovation and in doing the innovation uh, uh the, like the, the, they are uh, coming up with the new ideas and they are spending a lot of money in research and development scientists are working and then uh, psychologists are working so they are mostly into the research and they keep on innovating the 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 new products which can be very appealing to the uh, to their target audience and the second thing is the omni guest experience so in case of omni guest experience other way in a simple way it is uh, of saying that they stay connected with the customer uh, and in uh, for example uh, they frequently uh, organize and show their presence by uh, by hosting the 10k uh, uh, marathons and also they have opened few stores in which they have given the dedicated space uh, for uh, to the customer so that they can involve in the uh, the the meditation and also in the in the uh, exercising over there they also give suggestion about the healthy diet in their uh, those stores and they they now name the, those stores as the experimental 
store, like experiential stores. So uh, in doing so, they are actually also building their image, which I have mentioned over here separately, but they are actually uh, trying to stay in touch with the customer and also building and maintaining the reputation of their image. The third point of the three growth plan, power of the three growth plan is the expansion. And they are expanding in new geographical locations. For example, they recently in the fiscal year 2019, they opened their first stores in Malaysia, Norway, and uh, uh, as well as Netherlands. And also they uh, launched the, uh, the region specific sites in France, uh, Japan, and Germany. Uh, so uh, if we see that uh, they are expanding uh, geographically and uh, 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 there is a major expansion, uh, uh, in, um, there is a major increase in the growth revenues uh, of the company coming also from uh, those regions, which is Europe and, uh, and the Asia. Now, uh, what do you mean by the decentralized model? They have adopted the decentralized model. So they, they are looking into the culture, the domestic culture, and then try to toss up or design the product according to that. For example, shorts might not be popular if it will be adopted, if it will be given in the any Muslim countries, for example, in, in Saudi Arabia. So over there, if they want to, uh, 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 appeal or they want to attract the new customer, then they have to keep that cultural norms or aspects in their mind while designing their product. So they have adopted the decentralized model uh, uh, when it comes to the innovation and design of the new products. And then finally, what I have earlier mentioned, they are striving hard to maintain the value and reputation of their brand by hosting the marathons, by uh, staying in touch or, or directly with the customers, and uh, as well as um, giving the dedicated uh, space in few stores in the in, 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 like in few stores, uh, so that the customer can have do, do the exercise over there, and also um, uh, the, uh, uh, you have the uh, the. Uh, uh, dietitian over there who can talk about the diets in order uh, uh, that uh, so that the customer can stay healthy. Now the management views, all these things which I have discussed, the management also have discussed the same thing in the item number seven. They started with this disclaimer that this discussion and analysis. So these, this whole paragraph is taken as it is from the 10K that this discussion and analysis contain forward looking statement based on current expectations that involve risk and uncertainty, blah, blah, blah. And they are saying that our actual results can be different uh, than the uh, than the real result, uh, like our actual result can be different than the results uh, which we are forecasting over here or what we are trying to say mention over here and it depends on many risk factors factors as well so in other words they are saying that uh, to the best of their ability what they know they are telling over here in this 10k but the actual results can be different they also presented the same numbers which we have discussed earlier for the uh, for the lululemon but in more detail so you can see the item number seven for more details uh, for example they exactly mentioned that what was the corporate expense uh, 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 when it comes to the uh, to this uh, to the store segment when it comes to the direct to consumer segment and the other segment so they have given the breakup over there and finally uh, in, in like because of the COVID, they mentioned this thing that they are very com co confident about the power of three uh, growth plan. And based on that, they are sure that they will be able to uh, 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 mitigate uh, the COVID situation. Also, they, uh, they they were they mentioned they have enough cash to meet the liquidity obligation, and also they have the uh, the capacity. Uh, through the revolving credit facility of almost 400 million that they can pay any uh, ob uh, like cash or they can meet any cash obligations uh, if it comes due. 
So the management view overall for the Lululemon is very positive and it makes sense also because we, uh, if you see the the main or key data uh, in uh, 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 the financial data for the company, it supports the management views that the, uh, that why they are confident and why they are positive about the future or uh, prospect of the Lululemon. So I'm for Lululemon up till this point in time. Uh, uh, the, the the business environment analysis and strategy analysis is suggesting that uh, Lululemon is right on track, at least uh, as far as when I uh, I checked these details from the 10K. Now, in order to ans uh, do the the business uh, uh, environment and the strategy analysis, uh, these seven questions. Uh, one need to answer and uh, you can pause the video and read these questions but mostly these are about the the product business and the 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 competitive uh, uh, strategy of the company and if we see that these questions are not mutually exclusive means that if you answer the first question you might be able to answer the major chunk or major portion of the second third or fourth question as well so uh, these questions if you will address you will end up doing the complete strategy analysis and the business environments analysis of any company so if we'll wind it up this lecture we'll see that we have conducted the business environment and the strategy analysis for the lululemon and we have seen that that what business the company is into and this is very important we need to know what uh, uh, what are the operational risk uh, which is uh, uh, to which the company is exposed to we want to see the recent financial performance and what the uh, what are their uh, main competitors and how well they are doing uh, uh, what are the the key numbers coming out of uh, their main, main competitors like are they having enough net income do they have enough earning uh, per shares uh, likewise we want to see their strategy and in order to counter their strategy what is the strategy of the company uh, to remain uh, competitive in the industry and finally we want to see and which we have also done in these this lecture that look at the management views are they positive and uh, for in case of lululemon they are very positive they know that they have they have no liquidity problems they also know that their their, their income is increasing there is a tremendous growth it when it comes to the revenue and they will be able to handle the uh, the impact of the covid 19 i hope uh, you learned uh, and you like this video and in the same way you do the analysis uh, on the companies uh, which uh, you are analyzing. Thank you.